call a meeting to order at two minutes after five. And we have Vic Dwyer with us and Orca, of course, and other than that, and and our guest, Paul Simonera. Hey. There you go. Okay. There you go. And George Romnecker. So, Sarah, we do have some amendments to the agenda, correct? Uh, yeah. Sir, you probably want to start the recording. Thank you, Bill. Yes. Thank you. There we go. Why are we recording it? it all by law, we have to record them. It's always recorded. Always recorded. So, Orca, Orca is raising their hand. Does that mean anything? I don't know. They're not doing anything on my end. I don't I got even. A little raised hand on my. I think they want to talk. No, no, no. It wasn't. It was my cursor. When it's over, it turns into a little hand. Nothing. Because <laughs> I just see. We'll, a presume they're, we'll presume that they're recording unless we hear from them. I they're just waiting. Hey, Peter. No, man. <laughs> and we're recording the Zoom meeting anyway. So, um, so amendment, Sarah. Yeah, the whole agenda has just been kind of trashed, unfortunately. Um, we got a letter from Lee Roseberg. I assume that was sent to the whole board. Did all you guys get that letter from Lee? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't understand it. Uh, it's not well, on the agenda. They're withdrawing the application right now, Peter. Oh, they're withdrawing it? We didn't. Yeah, I but the question is, what, what caused that to happen? Does anybody know what's going I on? Know. The rest, I don't think the rest of the Conservation Commission received this yet. Well, it came over yesterday afternoon at 4.30. So it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was kind of late. And Lee sent it to, um, looks like he just sent it to the uh, select board, the treasurer and Britt Hazelton. So I'll just read it to, into the record. It's a two line thing. It just says, I appreciate the civil discourse and difference of opinions. This appears to be moot for the time being since there have been some wrinkles and the VLT is withdrawing their application for the moment. They may decide to resubmit an application at a later date. Please note that this discussion can be removed from tomorrow's agenda. Okay. So there we, we don't are. know what the wrinkles are. I'm sorry? We don't know what the wrinkles, we don't know what the wrinkles are. I don't know what the wrinkles were. Yeah. And the Conservation okay. Commission, I, I guess, doesn't know yet. That you have as much information as well. Well, that isn't Lee the chair, so he knows. He is the chair. He'll, He'll let us know about it, I'm sure. Right. Were you, George, were you here just for that item? Just for that item, yeah. I'd like to stay for the village, but I can't. You can stay for as much as you want. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, we are going to have an executive session between the now and the and the time we go to the planning commission, just FYI, George. I might come back on for that. If I yeah. Can. Okay. Competing. That's going to be at six sharp. When like many house households now we have both have zoom meetings tonight yeah. but I, may, I may see you later on i hear you time to upgrade your broadband george yeah we're, we're trying we have actually or we're about to there you go okay um so i guess uh Sarah, if you or anyone else hears anything, I'd be curious to know what's what's going on. That seems a little uh, strange to me, but who knows? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yep. Um, and Dorinda and I had already scrapped the town's personnel policy, and since you guys we didn't we didn't send it out to you, it was like okay, so I don't know what to do now. So that brings us almost to the highway report and the treasurer's report and the executive session, and we have like an hour to kill. Ah! Well, what I would don't worry about it. The time usually goes. Yeah. Well, um, no, no, no. Let, let's just think about this. Is and I don't know what the personnel thing is. Is it something you can read to us, or is it something we need to? We really need to read. Is it uh, some important? Well, it's a it's a clarification. If Dorinda's here, I think she's here somewhere. Um, but uh, it was a clarification it's on vacation time. I think. Well, it, there's several different things. I think it's a good time to clarify dates. Um, one thing that came up at the end of um, June was the date <laughs> that was being used to for the carryover of vacation and time. And 
So there's nothing in the personnel policy that states um, whether or not the carryover is as of the end of the year, starting the first of the year, or if it goes with the budget year, it just says an employee can carry over X number of hours. So, and there was a few other things that I haven't had a chance to put together, but I've noticed that should just be in the record and clarified so there's no questions about it. So, but rather than do one now and then one later, I think it would be better just to do them all together. Okay. Well, in that case, in that case, you've got half an hour to fill. So you better start with the funny stories. Well, what about the highway report? <laughs> I'm gonna well, I mean, I'll... <laughs> Jesus, I, put, the pressure, put the pressure right on Steve. Is that what you're saying? Well, there's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> no, does. I mean, we can talk about the. We can finish up with the treasurer report if you want. I sent you the most recent financials. Um, right. I had a couple questions on it, and I've already talked to Steve about one of them, and we're going to get together and discuss that. So. Um, but I didn't know if you had any questions or anything. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, I just didn't, and I don't, I don't have them in front of me because I can't be on the Zoom meeting and be looking at the financials on my computer at the same time because for some reason I've scrambled up my screen. So my two screens now always show the same thing, which is a little weird. But anyway, mm -hmm. so I can't look at it. But I, I just had a quick question. The, the, um, Waterbury Senior Center. It looks like you give that in two installments. Is that right? Was it ten thousand that we approved? Yeah, we're breaking it out. Um, they actually sent us a monthly billing, and we said rather than do it monthly, that we were going to break it like in half. Mm -hmm. The one thing we did go forward with, and we paid, I think, most of the small um, appropriations, like anything that was two hundred and fifty or less. So those are out of the way. Um, one of the big things we haven't heard anything on is the first payment to the school. And we're still waiting, that's gonna be a big number. And we haven't heard anything on that yet, but fortunately the next round of taxes is coming up. So we, sh I still think we'll be okay. Don't we typically get that in November? Um, I think we've had it before now, to be honest with you, but I thought I thought we got it like pretty soon after school started. Yeah, because, um, but anyways, I don't think they've done anything with it. I think they're still trying to figure out their mess. Okay, well, I don't mind keeping the money in our bank account. I, nope. I, quickly, I quickly scanned through your report and I got to the end and I thought, oh man, where'd all the money come from? I quickly figured it out. We haven't paid the school. We haven't can paid I, the school. Can I ask you about how come we budgeted for 6,000 6, for gravel and we, paid, we spent 26? I mean, I know we need the gravel, but I'm kind of surprised that it was, we didn't think that we needed as much as we did. So you're asking Steve? me or Steve? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to the highways. No, she's wait. probably asking me. <laughs> I'll wait until you. <laughs> we we play. ended up. Go ahead, Steve. Is everybody ready? Yes. <laughs> so we ready. ended up having to uh, purchase more gravel than what we had talked about because we've changed things around. Uh, we'll still be, I think we're still going to be fine within our budget, uh, but I will have to adjust that for another year. So what did we change around that caused the $20,000 overage? <laughs> so let me, let me just jump in with Steve. A lot of that is, is just the way that we are coding things versus the way that we budgeted things. <clears throat> um, a main portion of that gravel that Steve and I had, had anticipated doing was under construction and paving the, the, the what I would call them. Yeah, it's the major line item. And again, as we've worked over the last 10, 
10, eight, 10 years about uh, having better clarity and, and making sure things are itemized in the correct number, there was always this, this discrepancy with, are we, you know, Steve and I originally were budgeting the $6,000 for summer maintenance. And in, and when him and I budget that, the main focus was that gravel was to be used for, for not, not resurfacing projects, uh, but small projects, as, you know, as touching up things that, that had a low spot and then places like McCullough Road where the substantial amount of this gravel has gone, that was under our construction budget. So again, it's, it's not an overage of, or what I would say is not an overage of a particular line item. It's just where, where we kind of anticipated you pulling that money from and then as opposed to the money or where mm -hmm. the money actually came out of. So it's just, I just want to clarify that there wasn't a, we didn't overspend. It's just a difference of where it ended up coming out of. So wouldn't there be a deficit? Wouldn't there be a smaller amount than in another account? I mean, if, if that's. Should part be. Of that, part of that thing is uh, what and I had a little conversation before this meeting. And when uh, we get together, we're going to be changing some of those numbers around. So uh, that will change, but I do think that we did go over on our gravel budget in that sense, but. Gotta have it. Well, it's just, you know, as, as we change things around and we change the way we code things, there's gonna be a period of time where things look a little screwy, but the whole purpose of having more, more accounts and more detail is so everything just doesn't get lumped under winter maintenance or summer maintenance. We don't really see what it is. Right. So, yeah. Well, there, there are some problems with the line item. What's that? Steve, right. what we right. I think you added an additional comment, Steve. Yeah, there are some problems with our line items, uh, but uh, as I said, Dorinda and I are going to get together, go through the bills and make sure that these things are where they should be. So those numbers are gonna change. Yeah. Great. Everything else that was over budget was something where it was like $100 and it was, you know, actual spent $125. So we're doing pretty well. I mean, you know, to be to be totally honest, I don't pay a lot of attention to the financials in the first quarter because you know, <laughs> you know, it just always seems like there's there's stuff going on and flipping around. When we get to when we get to five or six months, I start to pay pay serious attention. But I do look at the overall amount. I mean, this this is one of the areas though where, you know. The, the accrual thing can kind of screw us up a little bit, but anyway, it's fine, it's good. You have anything else, uh, Madam Treasurer? Uh, no, um, but to your point, uh, we're in the process of doing the audit from last year. Um, and some of the questions that are coming out of it is why we are so out of whack with our budget. And she's looking for explanations as to why, you know, that is happening. Um, certainly, and again, she picked on the highway department and, um, sure. and I can account for like, um, I mean, certainly the flood had a lot to do with it. Um, which put us way over. And I think just the way we're changing our line items, that that has something to do with it as well, so. Well, we had some maintenance items that were way over too. To, that was the uh, other one, is the repairs and maintenance. Why prepared. was it so high? Maybe she'd like to fix the trucks. You talking about me? <laughs> Well, we'd love to have you fix them too, Mary. I'm, I'm just saying, I, you know, I mean, I understand that that's a typical auditor question, but what do they expect us to do when we have a major breakdown? We got to pay for the major breakdown. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's key just to note that we're we're making sure that all of that is is marked accurately, especially with the equipment repairs. 
uh, that's where those all came from. You know, we, we've got the bills to show those and, uh, and it is what it is, like Peter said, but at, at least it is shown accurately within, you know, within our expenditures, which I think is, is equally as important, you know, but maybe more important. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, as, as we all know, and you know, I'm filling time a little bit here, but anyway, when <laughs> we have to do our budget, basically eight or nine months before the year even starts and 20 months before the year ends, it's, it's impossible to project some of this stuff. And some of it, like the repairs and breakdowns, what do you do? You look at the last few years and you'd say, that's what the average is and we hope we don't go over. Well, good luck with that, as we've seen over and over again. But I'm not, I'm not concerned. I, I, I talk to her. Uh, I'm happy to talk to her, Dorinda, if she gives you a hard time. Oh, no, she's not. It'll come out in the findings or whatever when she's done going through it. And I think she's trying to get a better understanding of what happened, you know, what's happening this year. And we've had a few hurdles as far as Patty leaving and Amy taking over. And um, so it's there's been some you know, issues there as far as, you know, the smooth transition. Yeah. So when you say she, you're talking about Bonnie Batchelder? Yes. Yeah. Just wanted to be clear. Um, Peter, if we do have time after the highway report and it's before six o'clock, um, can I just, and it's not anything um, that needs to be voted on, but I, if, if I could just um, ask a question about, or, or to have a little discussion about um, the capital planning um, process. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you why don't that. We finish up, why don't we finish up with the, uh, with the highway? You're, you're all set, Dorinda? Steve, what else have you got for us? All right, so what I've got is, Paul, you're on. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I did ask you guys, to, uh, I did ask Steve if, if I could at least give up, give a portion of, of tonight's uh, highway report, only because uh, I kind of wanted to, to leave, make sure it was left with, with the most clarity I could from, from, uh, from my departure here. Um, but, but so some things I want to go over, uh, you know, the, the crew has been left in, in at least the, the best possible and informed place that, that I could have left them. They've, they've got a, a, a more than manageable project list, uh, to try and complete before winter, uh, some, some projects that, that we had already started or projects that we had committed to, uh, as well as getting the equipment ready for, uh, for snow, uh, season. And Steve has been checking up uh, daily with them to make sure that that's still on track uh, and things seem to be going good at, at this point. Um, obviously, you know, we have all of our winter sand all ready to go. Chains have been ordered. We've got plenty of tires in the house, uh, you know, so we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in good shape. We've even got all the stone we need for mud season that, and in most the majority of it was from last season because when COVID hit, we just didn't have the mud season that we typically would without the traffic. So that's, that's going to be a bit of a savings too. Um, so Steve's been taking care of just kind of the communications with the guys. Uh, uh, the other thing I did want to cover is that I will, Steve had asked me before I left to help him out with the budget uh, for this coming season. And him and I will be working on that, you know, in the next few weeks here, month, uh, to make sure, or whatever the time limit is, to make sure that we get that in. And I, I told him I'd be happy to, to help out with that. Uh, and the last thing I just want to go over is, I know last time we had discussed um, in-shop tool inventory. Um, I did take on my last day, I did kind of go around and note like the bigger ticket items that we had talked about, tools, you know, the air compressor chainsaws at a total loss value. And I'm thinking we're probably in the 55 to $63,000 range, as opposed to, I think the, the 40 or 42 that, that was originally thrown out there. 
Um, so I don't think there's a, there's, there's a, I mean, it, I would call it at least a 10, 10 to $15,000 difference in what they had projected. to what I think is actually in there after going through and putting a, a today's dollar value on things. And that's replacement value, correct? That's replacement value at today's cost. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, but no, other than that, um, no, I've got nothing else unless Steve wants to kind of, uh, fill, fill in the cracks there. Well, <clears throat> we don't have a lot to do. The guys have been working on, we're doing a couple projects for, uh, uh, WMA state of Vermont, WMA, their parking lots. One is on upper Barnett Hill road. Uh, the state is paying for the gravel and the trucking. We were just pushing it off and it takes it back. Oh, I don't know. A quarter of a mile probably yeah, I think probably so. uh, and to a to a parking lot that they have that is complete um, and we will be going up uh, to the parking lot or WMA parking lot on Notch Road I don't know if we're going to get to it this week I think so but uh, that isn't going to take very long uh, we got to get a little bit ready and again the state is paying for the gravel and the trucking we're just getting it prepped for that and then we'll push the gravel off and that takes care of us for a little while anyway until we get to the point where that we do the joint uh, parking lot further up the notch road um, back in two two years or so whatever that time frame is hey steve can i ask you a clarification steve can i ask sure. a clarification Go ahead. Okay. Um, the first, uh, the first uh, improvement that the state is paying for for with gravel and trucking. You said, did you say that was Upper Barnett Road? Right, Upper Barnett Hill. Where, what are they doing? They're putting a parking lot up there. They they already have a place. They've got a place with a sign up there that is past our the end of the road where we plow. Okay. Uh, it's on the class four section. Okay. And they're improving the road so so that it's better improved because it was getting pretty bad so they wanted to improve the road they're paying for it uh, in conjunction with us so we have some time involved with pushing gravel up. does that answer your question well, so what I'm going to say is that the state is paying for gravel and trucking to improve uh, Upper Barnett Hill Road, a class four section that the state owns. Oh, state doesn't own it. The well, state doesn't own the class four road, we do. We, so why is the state paying for the gravel and the trucking? Because they want to be able to get vehicles down to where their parking lot is, which is about a quarter of a mile away from the best part of the because there's, there's also what is there one house on there paul it's on the correct. class four section now correct okay. they, all right so they they take care of that but the, going past there you couldn't get down through there with a the car or anything and the state has that parking lot and they wanted to improve it uh this is one of the things that we've been talking with them about so it's done okay i didn't and know it's improving our road I didn't know the state had a parking lot on Upper Barnett Hill Road. That's they do. Amazing. I didn't know it. Well, now you can go visit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Safely. Steve. Yes. Rick Dwyer. I I don't. I may be wrong, but I don't think uh, it's quite clear to uh, Sarah that there's a wildlife management area down there from uh, uh, property. That's where they're going. Okay. Thank you. Steve Thank had you. said you had said that, Steve. That that that's I just said where WMA, but yes. yes. But thanks, Vic. Thank you. Um, can I make a comment to the road? Sure. People. Um, so this is just on behalf of my neighborhood, um, where we have a neighborhood Facebook page, and this past week there was a huge amount of complaints about the grading that was done the day before the big rain. Right. Um, and is there any way it just was so, so greasy and really hard to get through, like quite dangerous, actually. 
um, past yeah. Dolan Road and down. Is there, I, I know we've talked about this and I just wonder, you know, with the forecasts, um, when we know there's rain in the forecast, why do we grade? I guess is the question. <laughs> I mean, really, it's it, you don't it, always hit it exactly like that. I mean, you know, it's not like right. It's not no, that, I know. Tell us what you're really clear. I mean, it, However, it just it, let yeah. me let me go into that just just for a second. I I, I believe that you are on that uh, schedule. He's going to start grading again tomorrow. The weather looks like we're going to be better, and he knows that we have to regrade. A uh, couple of roads, and I believe that was one of them that we talked about today. Okay, thanks. I just uh, told but, everyone I would mention it. Yeah, we so just want everybody to think you get your road graded twice because yeah. you're on the select board. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a I have a comment on that on that subject also. So this is what I call the curse of the slate. Yeah. For mm -hmm. I don't know how many years. I explain we that to them. That fresh slate to resurface our roads, and on uh, on East Hill, we suffer from the same problem, and we seem to have the same bad luck with timing on yeah, on and the grade. center, and it is it is very slippery and very dangerous. Right, when that happens, and I am very much looking forward to getting you know, places like, like your road, Liz, and, and East Hill Road, the, at least the hilly part of East Hill Road, um, resurfaced with crushed stone again, because then that really will not be so much of a problem at all. It's the, it's the- I know, I explained it to them that it was the old coverage of the road and that was the, that's gonna be an expensive endeavor. So it's gonna be that way regardless. Um, it's just, I think that, you know, honestly, it's, it's better off to not grade at all if there's any inkling of rain because it truly is so well, scary and dangerous. Yeah. yeah. You you might be coming to us if we did that. You might be coming to us uh, two weeks later saying, boy, this road is really rough and you haven't graded it in three weeks or four weeks or five weeks. I know. So We're never satisfied, that, Steve. That's, that's <laughs> we middle sex are never that. satisfied. <laughs> They get for having a road uh, vlog. <laughs> right. Well, you know that I really I can't tell you how many people I've explained this to, and once you explain it to them, they understand. But you know that crushed slate when it when it's just been graded and then it gets wet, it's like it's like greased lightning, and yeah. <laughs> we all need to know to slow down when that happens, just like the road when the road's covered with ice. Yeah, but I was yeah, going, problem. I was going up by the parrot's house at steep section of Center Road, and I said. God, is the slate still causing these kinds of problems? It's been a long time since we put any down. But I guess the answer is yes. Well, it is because we've gotten behind. And so, you know, if you look at our, I, I went back this fall and looked at our five year road plans and when we said we were going to resurface these roads. And, you know, a lot of them have been put off at least once, if not twice, because of storms and other issues where we couldn't get to them. So, you know, we need to get to them when we can. That's how a capital budget will help. <laughs> just, just, just find the money list. The budget's fine. Just find the money. <laughs> Show me the money. I know. Anyway, it's it is a challenge, and I don't mean to make light of it. Just it really is dangerous. And what I worry about, you know, and I'm I'm speaking for East Hill, but I'm sure it's the same over by you, is. Most of my neighbors now are used to it and everybody really slows down. But boy, when you have somebody coming in in the summertime from out of town, they have no clue. And uh, I pulled a few of them out of the ditch. So anyway. You're all set, Steve? I am all set. Paul, do you have anything set? else? Liz, Liz nope, I think I'm all set. Thank you're you. Up. We've got 14 minutes. Well, Peter, you know, uh, we do have that executive session. Right. Oh, but that's, a, that's a 14 minutes. I want to take a minute to thank Paul for his years of service. Yes, as our, me too. As our road foreman, and we're really sorry to lose you. You've done a great job, and thank you. I'm glad you're staying in town. Cause, oh, absolutely. Uh, but uh, we're really sorry that you decided you had to go somewhere else because of the hours. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Perhaps after Steve retires from the select board, you would like to join the select board well, as the road idea. commissioner. Or perhaps after your children get in high school, you could come back. <laughs> I was going to say, time time is of the uh, is a precious thing right now. Yeah, I see you already are tra a trader with your new shirt on too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had the whole weekend off, off Liz. Yeah, it was uh, uh, yeah long, big, big long break in in between jobs. Yep, the whole weekend. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you can't have everything. That's right. <laughs> No, but you thank didn't you. Pay for that vacation you didn't get to take. That's right. <laughs> anyway, Paul, thank you again. Absolutely, thanks, Mary. Yes. Thanks, Liz. Um, yeah. We all agree, Paul, and we're gonna we're gonna dream up some kind of uh, recognition for you. Maybe we'll create a few signs to put in your driveway. Who knows what we might do? <laughs> Perfect. Hopefully, they will they will be in a of a pleasant. Nature, yeah, yeah, I'd are. be careful. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be scared of your wife. She's liable to see me out I, there and come out with a shotgun. I, I would too. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we are very glad that you're you're staying in town and be a resident. Hopefully, stay involved in some of this. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So we appreciate your experience and knowledge. Believe me, we do. Um, so with that, Liz. Yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the actual um, survey or anything like that, because you guys, I think, got copies of it. Um, but um, but what I wanted to sort of give you a heads up on is that, you know, we applied for the grant to do capital planning, um, which we will hear in January, I believe, if we were uh, approved for the grant. Um, and, you know, they were fairly encouraging with us the whole time that we were um, asking them questions and writing the grant. Um, so, and it turned out to be a very well written grant. Um, and the only reason that I could see us not getting it is that there were, we got one last year. Um, and maybe there's people that haven't had one in a while. Um, so if we get the grant, um, the grant is written such that um, there will be a community process involved in it um, and that it will be sort of managed by the, the whole thing will be managed by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, so we would hire them to facilitate um, a community discussion um, and we would hire them to work with the people in the town to um, survey all of the equipment and assets that we have um, and put a price to them and help us um, sort of for um, foresee what we're going to need over the next 10 years. Right. Um, so what I wanted to sort of uh, just talk to you guys about is that in the survey, we said, are you interested in being on a, you know, capital planning committee, sort of a subcommittee? Um, so this would be like a group of people that met um, once a month to, to um, with the Regional Planning Commission to you know, go through the, the process of this. And we had about a dozen people who were interested with people I didn't know, people with some interesting skill sets. Um, and, um, and so I wanted to reach out to them before January to basically acknowledge and say, thank you for your interest in this. Um, you know, this is this is what's going to happen. You know, if we get the grant, this is you know the process that we're going to take in this. Um, and and so I kind of wanted um, to make sure that was okay with everyone that I reach out to people to kind of give them a heads up of of what this might look like if we get the grant. Um, the other thing is, what if we don't get the grant? Um, you know, do we still want to have a committee of people that sort of help us with this this process? Um, because I feel like we still want to um, do sort of a semblance of what you know CVCR, I mean, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission would have done with us. Um, there's lots of models out there of towns that have capital budgets that are fairly grandiose and fairly basic. Um, and so I think ours is going to be somewhere sort of in between. I think we asked for um, nine or 10, just under $10,000. Um, and, um, 
and some of that is because of the extra work they'll be doing, you know, holding a, I think there's like two community, there's a community input in the beginning and then a community input at the end. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to run that by you guys to see if you thought it was okay for me to reach out to these people that showed interest to kind of just give them a heads up of where we're going so that it's not a surprise suddenly if we do get the grant and we have to scramble um, to, to pull people together. No, I think you should definitely reach out to them. Yeah, and I do too. I think the other thing we have to <laughs> think about is, is I think it's really important for somebody from the select board, don't everybody raise your hands at once, uh, to serve on this committee. I'll do it. Yes, and there, there is, and and the other thing that I wanted to say too, and and I would like to say this just in the group, and it's not something we have to talk about right this minute, but when we're looking at the budget for next um, for next year, um, I I want us to include that like Dorinda's going to have more hours. That's just the the fact of this is that if we're working on a capital budget, Dorinda's going to have to be involved, and I want to make sure she's compensated for it because this grant does not allow for compensation. The same goes for Sarah. Um, that whether it's in the form of a stipend or something that we can give her out of our budget to compensate for extra hours that she may be working above and beyond what she's what she's paid for because there is going to be a process of of more detailed work than you know than normal I guess. Well, yeah. wait a minute. Uh, what we if we don't want to work those extra hours? Budget. Well. You know, I, I, then we probably can't do a capital budget, Sarah. I mean, we the, 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 it involves people answering certain questions and being involved in a certain way um, in terms of, you know, like, I, I can't tell what we have for trucks. I don't know. That's going to be someone working with Paul's replacement, um, the CVCRP, you know, working with them. It's going to entail... I mean, if you guys don't want to do it, we should have known that before we wrote the grant that no one actually wanted to have to help out because that's just the reality of these kinds of processes that that there are other people in the town that have to contribute um, time to it. And I'm not saying it's necessarily out of you know your work day. It's not like you're necessarily going. You're not going to be coming to nighttime meetings, but someone's going to be coming into your you know, maybe coming into the office or calling you and asking you for assistance on this. Well, we're going to have, you know, the, the fire department's going to have to be involved in this. Right. The, the road, the road folks are, I mean, you know, whatever that, whatever the magic number is, 80 or 90% of our budget is the road. So, you know, it's really going to be driven by the roads, but it's also going to be maintained, you know, it's all aspects of what the town spends money on. But the big ticket items are going to be are going to be uh, road related, or most of them are. Right. So and all, we all as a, saying is, whoop, I was gonna say we as a group will decide how much is uh, what we're talking about too. like, are we talking about anything over $5,000 is considered a capital expense? Or, you know, we can come up with that number of what we think is a capital expense. Sarah has something she says is statute that we have to vote at annual meetings on anything over. Sarah, was it five thousand or twenty five hundred? It's the only the um, you have to vote at annual meetings if you're going to go into an. It's an indebtedness statute for uh, items not that are not like road related, so fire trucks and you know any other things and if you're going to in debt I think if you go into debt for more than seven years you have to uh, bring those before the voters and they have to be and I think it has to be a paper ballot vote okay that was so, talking about that was the situation we ran into with the with the fire trucks that we did wrong we did wrong we had to redo it yes mm, that's right I think Liz that um well, you should definitely reach out to the people and tell them that um that you hope that they'll stay involved and we'll know in January whether we get the grant. And I think the budget issues we can discuss when the budget comes up. And number three, I think everything else can wait until we find out whether we got the grant or not. I don't think we have to resolve that issue right now. But, and just so you guys oh, know, it can so be weird. a 12 to 18 month process, this whole thing. It's not a fast thing. It's like, so you know, there's a commitment on the part of the committee um, 
to, you know, sort of stay involved in the process. So I also think that we would probably want to not necessarily um, just allow everyone who wants to be on the committee. I think that, you know, we can choose who's on the committee too. like try to make sure that we get a, um, a, a good cross sector of, of people in the community. Um, yep. Well, use your discretion. You're, you're talking. You're talking about capital expenditures, and you're also talking about uh, buildings, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, buildings. I mean, you can also, sorry, the light keeps turning off. You can also include in your, your plan um, sort of like maintenance schedules for things like, you know, replacements of, like when you're going to pump the, the septic system, that kind of thing. Like those things can be built into, I mean, that's, those are sort of the, the bigger, more grandiose ones. Like how often are you going to, um, you know, flush out the um, pipes for X, Y, and Z? Um, how often are you going to, you know, do your computer um, server upgrades, that kind of thing? I mean, there's all kinds of things. Um, well, I think I, I, we, we need to get past this tonight or we're gonna, we're gonna right. <laughs> blow our schedule. But yeah, right. my thing is, a, it's going to depend on whether we get the grant or not. If we get the grant, I think we'll have the ability to do a more detailed process. If heaven forbid we don't get the grant, then I think we have to look at this realistically and say, you know, what can we bite off? Like, are we really talking about our our major buildings and our major highway things and you know major major projects? I mean, we're not going to talk about you know buying paper for the for the photocopier or you know we've just got to we've got to see what, see what happens and then decide what realistically we can do. Because if we try and micromanage, you know, absolutely everything, we're just going to drive ourselves crazy. And I'm not sure it's really useful. Not to mention Sarah and everybody else. I know Sarah and Dorinda will be oh, much happier. Think, you know, I, I think, but it, you know, it's, so for instance, are we going to talk about things like, and I, I think, are we going to, are we going to project our, uh, our uh, employee expenses for five years. I, I would suggest we should. That's that's a major item. What about health insurance for those? You know, are we going to include those things? Or are we going to exclude them? Those are the kinds of things. Oh, that's we have. not a capital expenditure. Capital, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think those are in a capital expense. I think it really is more about buildings. It's about land, okay. like right. trails, okay. buildings, yeah. um, equipment. Okay. Um, All right. I hear you. I hear you. But anyway, the and the other reason that we might not get it is because I don't know, I don't think it's a scoring. So there's a rubric of how many points you get. And I don't think we're gonna score very high on our COVID need. Um, because this grant is sort of pin, you know, has it, some some pieces in it that are you get more points if you've been affected by COVID. We we tried to make a case for it, but it was kind of hard. We can't play hockey. What? Okay, so um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, hockey. Go into executive session. Okay. Now, we need to go into our executive session. Is somebody willing to make that motion, please? I moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're in executive session. Wait, so hold on. Wait, 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 Vic is still here. Wait, we got to get some, You got to also allow, allow third. You have to allow certain people to uh, be in executive session. Do you want the treasurer, the town, the select board assistant, and the and the road, the former road foreman? Yes. Yes. All right, well, I have to get rid of uh, Orca. Goodbye, Orca. So I'm removing Orca. And Vic. Vic's gone. Okay. And wasn't. Uh...